this has actually been one of the most fun trips. I mean, I don't know what it is about the L.A. girls, but their trips, New Orleans, now Palm Springs, they seem to really have a good time. You know, little drama, but really having a great time. Yeah. Hey guys, thanks so much for clicking on the video. This is my review for Married to Medicine LA. This is season two, episode nine. Listen, like I said, it's this is a different type of reality TV. I mean, generally when the girls get together, go on their trip, there's usually some clashes. We have that. If you're going to put together five, six women, you're going to have some little banter, but all in all, just a joy to watch. It just has been. And then the season's almost over. The season's almost over. We already be done. We already be done. So I'm kind of sad with that. Like, shoot, I was enjoying myself. But anyway, I'm still in Palm Springs. And the next event that they did, they ended up going on one of those pedaling party buses. Now, I'm from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. We actually have that. Um... You'll, you know, we'll see that. Like, I, I go walking in the evenings with um, a group of friends. And you'll see people doing a little thing. And they'll be just, just trucking along and doing their thing. And it's really cool. I'm like, oh, okay. All right, no problem. And you'll hear them. Like, like we'll be walking. And you'll hear them coming from behind. They're like, woo, woo. They be making them because they be drunk, child. <laughs> Their behinds be drunk, honey, and paddling on the little bus. But yeah, we actually definitely do have that in Pittsburgh, and people love it. So they were doing that. Child, I screamed, baby, when Leah lost her shoe. <laughs> Why they have to stop the bus? And Leah's stupid butt had to go run down the street <laughs> and get her shoe. And I just noticed. I kept telling y'all that I do like Leah. I've told you all that before that I like Leah. I, I I get I've gotten a kick out of Leah. And it literally took me to run into a girlfriend of mine that I used to work with years ago, who she's one of my favorite people. She just is she's just hilarious. And I just love her. We don't see each other all the time, but when we see each other, it's like, oh my God, I love you. <laughs> Janet Joy, my girlfriend Janet, honey. Leah reminds me of Janet. The way she acts, how quick she is to pop off, that is so Janet. Like, Janet is the girl that loves to have fun. Loves to have fun. But, baby, if you rub her wrong, she'll pop off and she'll fight. She'll fight. <laughs> she will fight. She'll fight. <laughs> but, thank God, you know, we'll be having all that from her. You know, she's a grown woman now. But even their choices of hair and different stuff. This whole thing with the bangs. And now I looked up, I said, Janet, uh, chow. I looked, and the first, I thought of Leah when I seen her. And then I was like, oh my God, I love Janet Joy. But that's who Leah reminds me of, my girlfriend Janet. But um, that fool lost her shoe. and had to, That is something stupid that Janet would do. Lose her shoe, disrupt the whole bus ride, and have to go run down the road, down the middle of the road to get her shoe. That is so Janet. So, Janet, <laughs> anyway, Kendra and Jasmine got into it on the bus, and I knew it was coming. I knew it was coming. She told her, she said, you're fired. You're fired because you're supposed to be my friend. You're supposed to be rooting for me and helping me out. But what you're actually doing now at this point, you are harassing me. You're harassing me, and I agree. She's been harassing you. That is the worst thing in the world to say, you know, because when people do it, they literally regret that they ever said that they were on a weight loss journey when after they say they're on a weight loss journey, then people start questioning everything they put in their mouth. Excuse me. People are, they're making a change in lifestyle. They're trying to do things a little bit different. They still have to eat. You have to eat to live. So they don't need to be torn apart and, and, and ridicule every time they go to put something in their mouth. That's horrible. It's horrible, and I don't know why people can't 
see it when they're doing it, that it's terrible, it's not fair, and it doesn't look good. And it doesn't feel good. It's awful. That is awful. She took longer than I thought she would. When she took that cornbread off of her that day, baby, I'd have put her right up underneath that table, honey. All y'all would have seen is the top of her head. Anyway, moving on. Um, the next event after that was a designer labels dinner. And that was put together by Leah. Jasmine's still on some old bull crap. She decides she's just going to wear this LS t-shirt. Like, what is LS? Child? Patty. It's her brand. But her brand ain't clothes. Her brand is, you know, luxury luxury uh, rentals and stuff. And it's just Patty. And she had this whole fur coat on and had it all buttoned up. And you're in Palm Springs with a fur coat on. You look crazy. But I don't know. And she just, it was just a dig. And Leah was like bothered. I don't even know why Leah was bothered. Because I wouldn't have been bothered. I would have been like, whatever. Whatever. They went into that. And then Shanique decided to say, you know, I really didn't like my gift. I didn't really like my gift that Imani gave me. I just thought, it, I, I just didn't get it. I really put some thought into, you know, that bag of dicks. <laughs> Her. She's like, well, girl, listen, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to take my gift back, and I'll give you your bag of dicks back. I was like, girl, don't push him on here, honey. Do not push my Imani, because the girl, she's going to let you have it. But I will say this. Y'all know from the door, from the time this came on, Shanique has never been one. I, like, I, I don't really care for Shanique. I, I, I love, I like Robert. I think her kids are adorable. I love watching them. But Shanique just goes all through me. This Shanique... In the last three episodes, I love this Shanique. I love this Shanique. She's like turned up and she's not trying to start drama. She's actually trying to stand up to the truth that she actually made and just really trying to have a good time. Now, when she started with the gift, I was like, Shanique, don't do it. But I love this Shanique, honey. She's just having a good time. And it's been a joy to actually watch her be turned up and actually having fun. I'm thinking she probably was a bunch of fun as a young woman. Like, she's a young woman now, but like in her early 20s, she probably was a bunch of fun. She probably was a bunch of fun. She probably climbed all up and down, Robert, everywhere she could think of, honey. She probably was just a bunch of fun. I don't know that old bitchy stuff she be doing. It's just so not, it's like two different people, but I've been really enjoying her. I really have. Um, then Jasmine starts this whole thing, telling him, well, you got to learn to open up to us. And they called, pulled her card, was like, girl, we don't know anything about you or your husband. And we don't even call him by his name. We call him by his initial. So what are you talking about? And she's like, oh, no, I don't want to do I, I don't really like to talk about myself. So shut up. And then she starts, she was trying to say, you know, we have a regimen that we follow. She kept saying a regime, a regime. Like, girl, what regime? What are you talking about? She's so stupid. That's another thing. People, people who are not wordsmiths, if you know you goofy, just shush. Don't be trying to use words that you don't want because you're being difficult, stupid. Regime. It's a regimen, you dummy. Anyway. She was getting on my nerves. She really was. She's getting on my nerves. She's still picking. It's on my nerves. Anyway, Mac, Robert, and Hobart were actually hanging out at home. And baby, he was talking about his concerns with Kendra working. Listen, they got in there and told him from the door, do you want to move? Do you not want to be happy? Then shut the hell up and don't try to stop her. Let that shit go. Or you're going to be looking for a home, dude. <laughs> <laughs> he got it. He understood. He got it. So I think they're going to be okay. <laughs> they're going to be okay. Next thing that the girls did, they went to a drag bar. Honey, listen. And they was in their labels, and they all looked really, really good. Even the the, the no-label stuff that Jasmine had on, she looked good. You know, they, they looked good. And they had a ball. Like, it wasn't, like, put on and... All the, they went to the drag bar and had a ball, but it was funny. They went, it's like, is it old folks' night? 
baby, it really was getting dragged down to the uh, retirement village. I said, but listen, I am a drag queen, and I've done shows down at the retirement village, and they've been fat. That, and I've told you all that before. Some of you who are watching this may not know about my whole drag persona and all that. I have always, I enjoy performing, period. I, I love what I do. But I've always loved my straight crowds that are like the crowds where it's where I've done like private bookings and different things. Just being somewhere where it's not, you know, drag in, in the, the, the gay bar is different than drag when you're hired for a, a private party and you go there. Because sometimes when we're in the bar performing, child, half of the bar don't even want to see the show. They're mad because you're taking up the dance floor and they really didn't come there that night to see the show. So you run into that in my city. In my city. Because in my city, we don't have drag bars like this. Like this is where you go and you know they're having a show. We don't have that. Okay? So there'll be times where those people have the bar don't even really want to see no damn show. Now, once you start there, like, okay, child, shit, it's the show. Eventually, it'll be over. But they ain't come to see no damn show. They came to dance and drink and fall out on the floor and, and, and whatever. So, um, to actually go to a retirement village and perform. Now, see, I would get a kick out of that. Because you are totally there for a specific reason. The people know you coming and they appreciate what you're doing. And they are in awe of what the art form is. So, you know, that those types of little events really knocks me out. I think it's groovy. But that's what they was like. It was old folks night hanging down to the drag bar. Baby and Missy Molly was showing out, baby. She got up. She ended up being part of the show. She turned all the way up, then turned the show out. Because you know she's tall like an Amazon anyway. Baby, them drag queens were getting their life off of Missy Molly, honey. But you know she's built down. And she's beautiful and she's bald, honey. So she sticks out like a sore thumb. And you know we love all that, honey. You know we love all that. First, soon as I first seen her, I was like, oh, bad bitch. Soon as I seen her, honey, I was like, oh, honey, listen. My drag mother, God rest her soul, my drag mother would be going up over Imani and that bald head. She, my drag mother would have loved Dr. Imani. And then when she opens her mouth and she has that aura about her and her mom, my drag mother would have got such life off of Imani. Everything about her. She would have loved everything about her. Trust me when I tell you. Everything. The way she dresses, the way she carries herself. Her mom, her her, her child, even the fact that he has the dreads and stuff. In it. My drag mother would have lived for Dr. Imani. You hear me? She would have loved her. She was like, that was her her version of the black woman. She she would have just got such life off of her. But anyway, and that did well. Listen, like minded folks, because you all know I lives for me some Miss Doctor Imani, honey. Anyway, but she got up there, baby. She was getting tips, and then she was talking on the mic, and I said, "Well, girl, you done became a whole drag queen out here, sis." <laughs> she had herself a good time. And all the girls were getting along. I said, look at them all getting along. It was fantastic. I enjoyed it so much. Then later on that night, Leah and Shanique were up eating, <laughs> eating chicken. They're eating fried chicken in the hot tub. <laughs> Listen, I ain't mad. They was eating that fried chicken in that hot tub, honey. And then they was making eggs. I said, y'all just drunk and was eating, honey. And then there was... um. Leah and Jasmine actually figured out their differences and buried the hatchet while they were in the damn hot tub. So it just has been, this whole trip has just been a joy and it was a joy to watch. I really enjoyed it. I really did. And I think we got literally one more episode. I think next week is the season finale. So it just is what it is. I'm so sad that it's going off. There's so much more to tell. But yeah, it's a short season, so. All right, y'all. I will catch up with y'all next week. Later.